Ralph appears agitated in the video. He squirms around in the back seat. Other times, he rests his head with his eyes closed. We need to get in the car. Listen, my brother just came by here. I was at street. He's now left, but he told me that he's committed a murder. I'm terrified for my wife. Okay, hold on. Because I don't know if he's going to come back here. Okay. What's his name and what did he leave in? His name is Eddie Ralph. Come on, Dave. Get your shoes on. Let's go. How do you spell his last name? R O U T H. I'm uh, sorry. I'm really, no. I'm really scared. Dude, I'm really up. Get in the car. Now, listen, I don't know if he's being honest with me. I know. Apparently, like, I'm just really terrified. I don't even know where your police department is. Is it okay. over there? Um, over by the highway. It used to be the church. Yes, ma'am. It used to be a church. I'm just going to stay on the okay. phone with you until you get here, okay? What is, and who did he say he was, he had killed? He said that he killed two guys. They went out to a shooting range. And he's, like, he's all crazy. I don't know if he's on drugs or not. But I know that he's been. Let me let me talk to you. Let me ha my husband's gonna talk to you because I'm so nervous. He said he killed two guys uh, at a shooting range. Shooting range? He was talking about. He, he didn't say. He didn't say. Okay. Uh, he was recently uh, diagnosed with PTSD. With what? PTSD. PTSD. Yeah, post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, okay. And he's been acting real weird. Some uh, he's, he's got all of the mental hospital actually. Okay, what hospital did he get out of? Uh, Green Oaks. When did he get out of Green Oaks? Uh, about a week ago. This is Eddie Ray Routh. He was born on September 30th, 1987, to Raymond and Jody Routh. Routh grew up in the Dallas suburb of Lancaster, about 20 miles east of Midlothian. From when he was 13 years old, Routh expressed his interest in joining the military. At age 18, after graduating from the same high school that Chris Kyle, one of his victims, had also attended 13 years previously, he enlisted in the U.S. Marines in 2006 and became an armorer. The following year, Routh was deployed to Iraq before being sent on a seven-month Middle Eastern deployment on the USS Bataan. Routh then served in Haiti for four months following the earthquake in January 2010. It is believed that it was in Haiti that Routh's mental health began to deteriorate. At one point, Routh told his father he had been fishing hundreds of bodies, men, women, children, out of the ocean, piling them up and throwing them into mass graves. After serving for seven years, Routh was honorably discharged from the Marine Corps in July 2011. In the same month, Routh was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder after being admitted to the Dallas Veterans Administration Hospital. It was clear since his return that Routh struggled with normality, and his mental health issues hampered his chances of holding down a job. He was prescribed a large range of powerful medication including antipsychotics and antidepressants, and was also self-medicating with marijuana and alcohol, contributing to his experiences of a serious depressive illness. However, after Routh experienced several delusional episodes resulting in him being in and out of the hospital and then drugged and discharged, Routh seemed to improve and moved in with his girlfriend, Jennifer Weed. This later proved to be a risky move because Routh later took Jennifer and her roommate hostage with a knife in their apartment until police responded to the incident. As a result, Routh was admitted to the Veterans Hospital again. Clinicians believed Routh's psychotic symptoms were caused by alcohol abuse and offered inpatient treatment, but he declined and stopped taking his medication altogether. In the evening of the day he allegedly shot and killed Navy SEAL sniper Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield at a gun range in Glenrose on February 2, 2013, Routh stole Kyle's pickup and fled the scene and was later found sitting in the parked vehicle, where officers heard him talking about voodoo the apocalypse, and people feeding on his soul. Audio from the arrest showed Routh saying that everything was happening so fast and that I don't know if I'm going insane. He went on to ask an officer, if it's voodoo that's upon us, and I can feel everybody feeding on my soul. Routh then sped off and started a police chase, but the pickup he was driving broke down on the freeway, after which he was forced to surrender. 
Before the interrogation begins, Ralph seems far too relaxed and seems oblivious to the gravity of his situation. At this point, he is already a suspect in the double homicide, which explains why he's still in handcuffs. After seeking if the handcuffs can be taken off, Texas Ranger Danny Briley politely rejects his request. He then goes on a tangent about him trying to find more about the world he's been living in. This is point blank bizarre and questionable behavior. The detective has just read him his Miranda rights, and immediately after, Routh begins talking about his beliefs about counsel. However, the detective is taking none of it and immediately brings him back to the main issue of Kyle and Littlefield. Today 
the detective uses psychological pressure by telling the suspect that he is convinced of his guilt. In this case, the goal is not to get Ralph to confess to the crime, but to understand his motive or reason for committing it. To do this, the detective attempts to build rapport with the suspect. Rapport is an interactive concept that characterizes the relationship between an interviewer and a subject. An interrogation is typically perceived as beginning when rapport is absent. The interrogator attempts to develop it at the outset and maintains it throughout, and sometimes reclaim it when lost. A popular theoretical conception of establishing rapport suggests that three elements must be present. First, both parties should be focused on the same objectives and attuned to a common mindset. Second, the interaction should flow comfortably. And third, both parties should generally have positive feelings toward one another. The detective reassures Routh that he understands how he feels to get him to open up. The detective starts the interrogation with the classic step of establishing a timeline of events that lead to the crime. By establishing a timeline, the investigator can determine where gaps in the investigation exist, document the movement of witnesses and victims, exploit inconsistencies, develop alibis, and evaluate the plausibility of the suspect's case. Well, you know, I just, I keep talking to Chris, you know, From a different lens, most of Ralph's answers mirror the nonsensical ramblings of someone who has psychosis and other mental illnesses.
face. Chris Kyle was the deadliest sniper in the history of the U.S. Army. He himself recounted his time with the Navy SEALs, the main special operations force of the U.S. Navy, in the bestseller American Sniper. Clint Eastwood used the autobiography to make the 2014 film of the same name. Kyle the Legend, as his comrades in arms called him, or the Devil of Ramadi, as his enemies knew him, became a SEAL sniper in 1999. In the four tours of Iraq during the war, he allegedly registered 255 kills, although the Pentagon only recognized 160. Even so, the Pentagon figure makes him the deadliest sniper in the history of the U.S. Army. In 2009, Kyle was honorably discharged from the Army, returned to Texas, and started a security company. He also counseled other veterans with problems. Several months earlier, 25-year-old former Marine Ralph had moved back in with his mother, Jody, in Lancaster, Texas. Jody was an employee at the school Chris Kyle's children attended. After Jody approached Kyle about her son's issues and asked for his help, Kyle agreed to share his military and mental health experiences with Ralph. And what's that other guy's name? Chad Littlefield was a proud lifelong resident of Texas born in Dallas and graduated from DeSoto High School in Dallas in 1995. He worked at DeSoto's Eagle Labs, an oil services firm, as its facilities and logistics manager. Kyle and Littlefield were workout partners and soccer dads in Texas. They regularly visited the firing range both for professional training and to fulfill the mission of Kyle's charitable foundation. Littlefield was involved with Kyle's cause and volunteered to install workout equipment in disabled veterans' homes. Kyle and Littlefield picked up Routh at his home, and they drove to a shooting range in Chalk Mountain, Texas, as part of therapy. We drove down into the country out right there, and then they uh, went and did some shooting sports, you know. <clears throat> so, you know. What kind of shooting sports? Well, I imagine they're. Tons of people that are eating on my soul right now. 
After leaving the shooting range in Kyle's black pickup truck, Routh went to his sister's apartment around 5.45 p.m. Routh then told his brother-in-law and sister, Laura, that he and two other people were out shooting target practice and he couldn't trust them, so he killed them before they could kill him. Routh told them that he traded his soul for a new truck. Laura Blevins told police her brother seemed out of his mind, saying people were sucking his soul and that he could smell the pigs. He said he was going to get their souls before they took his. When she asked Ralph who he had killed, he said Chris Kyle and Kyle's friend. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a, a want to or a need. It was a need. I had to, to get out of that situation I was in today. That may have not known. I was going to be the next one that was going to be up there getting my head shot. Completely off, you know. Ralph states that he believed that he needed to kill or else he would be killed even though there was no apparent threat to his life, and he was the one being helped. Almost as a premonition, during the trip to the shooting range, a worried Kyle texted Littlefield in the vehicle. This dude is straight up nuts. He's sitting right behind me, watch my six. Littlefield texted back, using a military reference for watching one's back. Routh confesses to killing both Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield. This is a huge break for the interrogators. I'm not sure they're putting in work, you know, against it, but when did you come up with Uh, it was a pistol. What count? Uh, it was a nine. It was a nine. Was this a semi-automatic or revolver? It was just a, a semi-automatic. What brand gun? It was a, a SIG. It was a SIG Sour, you know. What did you do with that gun? Well, I'll sit on that truck, that's why I'm taking, you know, when I pull back into town, People feel like they could talk to Jesse or anybody like that. Nobody wanted to talk to me about what was right <clears throat> to do. Everybody wants me to do the right things, sure. But nobody wants me to pay for it, right? Yeah. I know it's right. Everybody wants me to live for free out on these farms mm -hmm. that are high fence and stuff. 
and just shoot for a living. Well, I mean, I can, I can keep shooting for a living. How many times did you shoot now today? Briley asked Ralph to recount the number of times he shot the victims. He will then go on to ask him to describe events as they happened in the shooting range. Such information is crucial to determine if Ralph knew what he was doing at the time of the incident. After rambling about taking souls and how he's tired of playing chess with his life, Briley asks Ralph about his drug use because he thinks there is a correlation between his bizarre comments and drugs. It seems Briley does not want to buy the idea that Ralph did not know what he was doing when he shot Kyle in Littlefield. Remember, detectives are all too familiar with suspects feigning insanity to avoid trial or at least get a lighter sentence if found guilty. I didn't know what else to do. My 
after it moves to the right, you know. What was right then, what was wrong. I mean, I know what it's right now, but I left, you know. Rouse states that he fled the scene after he killed his victims. This may lead the judge to deny him the insanity defense and the jury to believe he knew right from wrong. In the next few minutes, Briley brings up the idea that Ralph knew what he was doing during and after killing Kyle and Littlefield. Yeah. 
that be truthful with me if it wasn't. Just be truthful. What was in that bomb? Briley believes Routh is not insane and that his actions were triggered by drug use and not a mental illness. Did 
tell me about that. Well, you know, I loaded uh I loaded up a forty five and I shot at it. What kind of 45 was it you shot? Just some target practicing with? It was, uh, I guess it was, uh, it was like a revolver. <coughs> was that gun used to shoot anyone today? Riley tries to establish Ralph's motive for the murder of Chris Kyle, and Ralph remains silent, which makes Riley more convinced that Ralph is aware of the crime he committed and was an active participant in the killings. Do that because you know she did wrong today. 
Again, Briley is putting more pressure on Routh to get him to acknowledge that he knew right from wrong when he was shooting his victims. The fact that Routh does not deny his actions were wrong and even apologizes to the victim's families makes his behavior even stranger. He believes he did what he had to do to preserve his life, but is remorseful for the deaths of Kyle and Littlefield. Rao seems to have forgotten he's in handcuffs, not bracelet things.
After talking about pigs, tons of people eating at his soul, and playing chess with his life, it is anyone's guess what is in Ralph's mind here.
The definition of creepy is causing an unpleasant feeling of fear or unease. One may say this directly applies to what you are looking at right now.
the nine millimeter decision that you said you used to kill him with? Uh, is that your personal scene? Or? No, that was the uh, that was the other guys. Okay. So. All right. Uh, what did they do after you shot them? Can you explain that to me? They uh, they they lay there and they they weren't breathing anymore. So. Okay. Despite being armed. Kyle and Littlefield did not get the chance to defend themselves after Routh started shooting. Routh shot Kyle seven times and Littlefield six times. Um, about what time did that happen? Yeah, you know, uh, so. And then you left and you drove to your sister's house. And you talked to your sister, you told her what you did. Was there a, some some other guns in that same vehicle you were in? Did you tell ask your sister if she wanted to see those guns? Do you remember that? Yeah, I did. Well, why did you want to show her? Riley tries to determine whether the marijuana that Routh had smoked that day was laced with any other drugs that led him to take such drastic action. Almost step out of here and 
Get these guys to get back with you. I, I, I told you where your family was at. Call it a challenge. Yeah, that's where your family was at. I know a lot of the families out there grieving, right? And you know the difference between right and wrong, right? Yes, sir. You do. Yeah. Routh admits that he knows the difference between right and wrong. This means that any insanity plea he submits to the court will be severely weakened. Later in his trial, 
his defense called family members, friends, and a psychiatrist who testified that Ralph had serious mental issues before the murders in February 2013. Psychiatrist Dr. Mitchell Dunn, who had interviewed Ralph in the spring of 2014, testified that Ralph told him that one month before the shooting, Ralph believed his co-workers were cannibals and wanted to eat him. Dunn said that it was his expert opinion that Ralph had a mental illness. However, forensic psychologist Randall Price, who was called by the prosecution as a rebuttal witness, testified that Ralph knew that what he was doing was wrong. Price said that Ralph had paranoid personality disorder, which is not a mental disorder, and that Ralph's psychotic symptoms were largely due to heavy marijuana and alcohol abuse. But in cross-examination, Price conceded that Ralph did not sound normal in part of the confession as seen in the footage. I killed them because they weren't talking to me. This is the only explanation that Eddie Ray Routh has given so far about why he murdered Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield on February 2, 2013. The fact that one of the victims is the deadliest sniper in American history, coupled with the timely release of the film about his life, turned the trial into a spectacle. On February 24, 2015, after only two and a half hours of deliberation, the jury found Eddie Ray Routh guilty of the murders of Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield. He was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole and is currently an inmate at the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Prison. All right, we, the jury, find the defendant Eddie Ray Routh guilty of the felony offense of capital murder as charged in the indictment. That verdict is signed by Ms. Stafford as four person of the jury. You may be seated at this time.